I, I could screw these down and everything, but uh, chances are I may get into this and decide I don't want to use this anymore and use that as a computer, so I want to be able to do that. I'm not going to make any permanent damage. I'm going to use the three-sided tape, two-sided tape again. I'm going to bend that tab down so it goes down flat, okay? I like to peel the tape back away from the plastic. The plastic is very hard to get off. And the two-sided tape around the edges, just like that, so it gets a good bond. Of course, you don't want to touch two-sided tape. Look, looks just like that. All right. And we connect that one to that, just like that. And we'll slide it in here. You don't want to let it make contact until you're ready for it to. Because it's going to stick and it's going to be hard to get loose. Usually, got to use pliers to move this stuff. Alright, so we're sticking that down. Alright, it's pretty secure. Alright, got a hard drive trays, got our power cables. <laughs> Side panels on. And connect the keyboard and the mouse. All right. And connect the monitor. And connect the power. It's gonna look just like that. Okay. We put a hard drive in. We're gonna have our uh, our clone disc. Now we'll put the clone disc in tray two because that's the way I like it. The disc is set to cable select. You lose you look at the little jumper here to tell which one cable select is. Pull the thing out. Uh, make sure that it's in cable select. It might say it on different places. You might have to do a little research to find out which is which. All right. I'm gonna plug. Slide the hard drive in a little case here. Get the power cable. Now we have too much power cable. That's fine. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna need a clone drive. But look at here, we got a clone drive. With Cronus, you can use different sizes, which is good. I put the drive, the clone drive, in the top. Put some power on there. IDE connector. All right, that basically does it. <coughs> you have a clone station. Doesn't look very good. And uh, you might be able to use this piece back too. Let's see if I can get that back on. Make it a fancy looking clone station instead of a piece of junk. Alright, not too bad at all. Got your little clone station. Sweet. Alright, this is Jovian with Jovian Technology signing off. I'll show you how this bad boy works in the next part of the video. Alright, if you followed step one and step two, or the one big step one, however you want to put it, this is what your finished product should look like. Minus some extra little labels to make it look a little prettier, or in case you forget which way, which slot, which drive goes into, or if you're uh, gonna let other people use it, you want to let them know which one it goes into, because they're gonna be really mad if they wipe out 
the source drive. Which is not what they want to do. All right. Okay, what you want to do first is you want to power on the computer, of course. You want to have your keyboard plugged in and your mouse plugged in. And also, I have a, a wireless keyboard mouse plugged in through my KVM switch. So we're going to power it up. We're going to go over here to the monitor, see what's going on. Okay, we want to hit whatever button it takes to get to your BIOS, which I missed it. I might have to do it again. Okay, mine was F2. I press F2 to get into my BIOS. I'm going to go down to drive to boot sequence. Okay, boot sequence. I'm going to want to change it to just like that using the uh, plus, which is already done, to where the CD-ROM is on top. And the diskette drive, you can put that at the bottom if you want, but I have mine second. And then the hard drive is third. Which you could take the hard drive off completely if you wanted. Okay, you want to exit. And then you want to save your changes, which mine are already saved. So next time, when you boot this up, it's going to go directly to the CD. Because the CD is inside of the thing. And it's the only CD you're going to use with this clone station, which is the Cronus 10 CD. And I told you, you can get it wherever you want. But you should buy it from those people because they make a good product and you need to buy more. All right, let's see. If you got your computer set up right, it should look just like that. And it should be working if you follow all the steps, hopefully. And then your screen should look like this, okay? You should have a keyboard and a mouse connected. And your screen should come up to this, Cronus True Image Home 2010. All right, you want to select the full version because uh, the safe version doesn't usually work with two hard drives. Alright, so we're going to select the full version. And the graphics card on here doesn't support the resolution on the CD. You may not have that problem if you're using a different computer. But mine has that problem. And it's not that great, but I just deal with it. It still works. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Okay, it'll take just a moment to boot up. And then it starts to look like crap. Now on other computers, it didn't look like crap, so it's the resolution setting on this graphics card, on this computer. But I'm not about to change it, because it's fine. It works, I'll put in another one if it's a big deal later. You want to go to Tools and Utilities, right here at the bottom. You can still read what it says. Alright. And if you put it over it, it comes even clearer. You want to go to Clone Disk. All right. Uh, you can use Automatic if you want. If you know that both the drives are the same size and you want the same size partitions, you can just choose Automatic. Most of the time, we choose uh, Manual. And then the, when you you can't really tell what the little buttons down here say, but if you put it over, you can barely make out Next. And next and proceeds always on the left usually. Okay, uh, like I said, are using disk two as a source, and then next disk two source source. All right, we're gonna click next. All right, then we want to select the target hard disk drive. Okay, the target is going to be disk 1, of course, because we put it on the top. It's very important to know which one is which. You might have to look at the serial number if they're the same. But as long as you know that you put disk 2 in there, it's usually going to be disk 2. And that's why you want to do disk 2 every time so you know which one it is. If you put it in disk 1, sometimes they look identical. It's hard to tell. All right, so the destination is disk 1. We're going to click next. It says there's something already on this hard disk. Are we sure we want to do this? We're going to hit OK. Now normally the hard drive has to be uh, bigger than the source drive. Um, 
The one I have in for demonstration may or may not work since it's uh, smaller than the source drive, but the partition that is burned on it is smaller than the uh, destination drive, so it may still work. We're going to give it a try. We're running on the fly. Uh, as is would be the same partition. So if you have the same hard drive, you want the same partition, you select it. Proportional, if you have a portion of your a hard drive filled is going to fill a portion of the next hard drive and if it's a 200 gig it might fill a much bigger portion proportion okay uh manual is usually where i go okay next you can play around these settings and do them whichever way you want because you have different needs for different things okay we're going to check change the size of it because uh this disc is smaller so we're going to create a smaller partition all right, so uh, we're going to hit edit. Uh, I know that the partition on this drive is like uh, 6 gigs of uh, of uh, software, so I'm just going to put this one as uh, 8 gigs. And that's going to leave me 4.7 gigs of unpartitioned space. Well, I'm going to do it anyway, because this is a... Um, this is a demo, you know, play with the settings, but normally you want to fill up the whole partition. I always like to have extra partitions to use as recovery. Um, so, you can make a, a recovery partition with software as well. Alright, we're going to hit next. And it's going to tell you that uh, select the partitions on your new hard disk from the list below. So, we're going to put it on this uh, 10 gig partition. All right, and this is the summary. It says the source is disk 2, which is what we want. The target is disk 1, which is on top, which is what we want. Before, the uh, disk 1 had uh, some data on it, and it had a 15 gigabyte partition. And then after that, it's going to have a 10 gigabyte partition with uh, 4 gigabytes of unallocated space. We're going to hit Proceed. And from there, it's going to start cloning the disk. Then we're going to pause the video, or stop the video, then we're going to jump back to the done screen. <laughs> Alright, I'm Jovian, Jovian Technologies. The clone is done, it works great. Um, if you have the same issue as I have, try a different graphics card. I may try one later. I just didn't want to spend any money in the project. I just wanted to use existing parts. And I spent all kinds of research on this just to get this little machine going to save me hours and hours of time. Now, I hope this has worked for you. It's working for me. So, have a good one. We'll see you next time. Hopefully, next time my video might even be better than this one. You know, hope you didn't fall asleep. Take it easy. Jovian Technologies, www.j0vian.com. Tune in to my next video on how to change the Windows key to a legal valid key and activate Windows so that you can use your clone legally on another computer. Legally. You want to do it legal, right? If you're handing these computers out to people, you don't want them to end up like a computer inferno. If you haven't heard of them, Microsoft gets them all the time. Alright, so see you next time. How to change your Windows key to a valid new Windows key and how to activate Windows. This has been a production of Jovian Technologies. www.j0vian.com